Hey y'all, in this video we're going to finalize the vectors and start toolpathing the pirate for our multicolored epoxy inlay. Now if you missed the first few videos in this series, I've put a link to the playlist of all of the videos in this series down in the description box of this video. I've also put it on a card at the end of this video. So if you watch all the way through to the end, there's a link right there at the end. Okay, off camera, I have done a couple of modifications to this pirate. First thing you can probably see is this vector here. I have outlined the carving. This is going to be my profile cutout after this project is done. You'll also notice the material is a different size. I have been searching for a piece of material to cut this pirate into, and I finally found a nice piece of leopard wood that I think is going to work out fine. So I had to scale down the pirate to fit the material, but that worked out all right. You'll also notice this big vector out here. This is for the surfacing tool paths that we'll use before we carve the pirate to make sure the material is nice and flat so that all of our carvings go in the correct depth. Then after we're finished with the epoxy pouring, we can come back and surface everything smooth and do the final reveal on the finished carving but more on that in the next video. I've also put my XY datum position up here at the top left corner in my job setup. The reason for that is I use a touch plate to set my X, Y, and Z zero. And I'm going to need a, an area on my piece of material that is not going to have epoxy poured into it. So I can maintain that good XY datum position and a nice flat Z0 position. This area up here is not going to have any epoxy poured into it, and there's more than enough room for me to use my three way touch plate. So those are the modifications that I have made to the drawing off camera. Everything else has been covered in these videos. I have not toolpathed anything. I have only created this vector and this vector. Let's get over here into the Layers tab real quick and let's take a look. I have arranged these layers in more or less the correct order so that. I can come down this list and figure out which toolpaths need to be run first. I forgot to mention another vector I've added is I came along here and I selected this outside vector that covers the entire perimeter of the pirate and I offset that vector outward by five thousandths of an inch, creating this vector here. Now the reason for that is because I'm going to carve out the entire area that's going to be covered by this inlay, and I'm going to fill it with clear epoxy. The reason for that is simple. If you have ever carved anything, be it with a V-bit, an end mill, doesn't matter what, you know that the minute you cut into a piece of material, you have created end grain. So all of these areas around here where we're going to carve in, this will be recessed down, all of these edges are going to be end grain. And as we all know, end grain will absorb any kind of pigment, be it stain, epoxy, paint, it doesn't matter what. By cutting this outside vector slightly larger than the inlay 
and filling that with clear, if that end grain is going to absorb anything, it's going to absorb that clear epoxy. Then all of my other colors will be poured inside that area, leaving a very slight clear outline that won't be visible in the finished project. The clear epoxy will pick up the color of the black outline and it'll pick up the color of the wood so it won't be visible in the final project. With that in mind, I want to make sure that that is the first thing I do. That's the first toolpath I create and it's the first toolpath I actually cut. So I have that first in line here in my layer. Then I'll come along and cut his flesh tone, then his brown shirt, then the dark gray for the center of his hat, the medium gray for his sword, the gold for the hilt of his sword. I'll cut his beard next, then the white for the skull and crossbones. The yellow is actually going to be a gold color, which will be his earring, his blonde hair and mustache and eyebrows, then the green of his eye, the pink portion of his eye, the shadow under his eye and in his ear, right in here, then the outlines of our skull and crossbones, then Finally, the black outlines for everything. Then I can surface. Let me move that up right now, now that I'm seeing that it's out of order. Then finally, our cutout. This is the order that we need to pour our epoxy. So this is the order that we need to make sure our tool paths are in. Now, how did I come up with this? Well, let me introduce something else to the mix here. And that is a little word processor document that I came up with to show the order of operations. Now, what I'm looking for in creating this order is which of these tool paths, which of these colors are going to cut into other colors. Now if we notice right here we have his beard and it goes right through the vectors for his mustache. So if I cut his beard before I cut his mustache I'll be fine. But if I cut his mustache first and pour that epoxy, let it cure, then come back and cut his beard, it's going to remove this area of mustache that I've already poured. Then I'll have to try to match the epoxy color to fix this or recut this entire thing because I made that error. So I had to go back through and look at the order so I could basically figure out which colors are going to lay on the top of other colors. And that is how I came up with this list. Now, obviously, everything is going to overlay the clear, so that's got to be first. Anything on his face is going to overlay this peach color, so that needs to be second. The brown shirt, there's nothing really going to overlay the brown shirt but it's a large area, so let's get that done as well. The dark gray of his hat has to be next because we have the white of the skull and crossbones and the black skull outline as well. So you have to go through the list of all of your colors, then go back through your vectors and see which parts are going to overlap other parts. Okay, so we have that figured out and I have my layers pretty much in order. Another thing that you'll notice I've done here is the outlines of the skull and crossbones has its own separate layer. 
That is because it's going to have to be cut to different depths and use different start points to be able to cut into the material deep enough for these very tiny lines so that they don't get removed during the surface path. So, with all of that in mind, we're ready to go ahead and start calculating toolpath. Now, I'm going to be referring back to this pouring schedule and the order of operations, but we'll get it all settled and you'll see what I mean as we progress. So, let's go over here to the toolpath tab. The other thing to mention is that all of these toolpaths are going to be cut using a V carve engraving toolpath. So, let's go ahead and get started. The first toolpath we're going to calculate will be the clear that covers the entire carving. Let me also mention right here, right now, that the cutting depths I'm going to use are going to be for this display only. When I actually calculate the toolpath, this clear toolpath will be the deepest carve of the entire project. And it's going to be 0.12. So I'm starting at zero. I have a flat depth of 0.12. I'm going to use a 15 degree V bit for the entire car, all of the toolpath. Every toolpath that will allow, I'm going to use an eighth inch two flute end mill as my clearance tool. I'll use an offset strategy, and I'm going to ramp the plunge moves over a distance of one inch. You'll notice that I have not selected a vector out here. That's because we're going to use automatic vector selection. We're going to associate these toolpaths with all of these layers we created over here in our drawing. The way we'll do that is we'll come down here to vector selection and we'll click selector. Now this is the thing to watch out for. We're going to have to make absolutely certain that on all of these toolpaths we put a check mark to associate with the toolpath. This is crucial because this won't work if we don't have a check mark here. For the selection, I'm going to select close vectors, all close vectors, select the vectors on selected layers only. Now there's a check mark in dark gray. I don't want to select the vectors on that layer. I want to select the vectors on clear. Now you'll notice when I put a check mark, that outside vector over here, it's selected. So I've got closed vectors, all closed vectors, selected layers only, clear. Associate with toolpath. I can now close this. And as we see, that outside vector is the vector that's selected. Now, if I make any modifications to that layer, those modifications will be reflected in the toolpath. I will have to recalculate it, but it will include any vectors and any changes I've made to those vectors in the toolpath once I recalculate them. Now I'm going to use a little bit different naming convention this time. I'm going to use the color that I'm pouring and I'm going to enter which step it is. So this will be my first step and then I like to use a space hyphen space. Then I'll type in clear. This lets me know that this is the first toolpath I'm going to run and I'm pouring the clear color. And we'll calculate that toolpath. And we can see that it's going to carve away the entire thing. I've got two check marks here in each of my two toolpaths this one using the 8th inch end mill, and this one using the V bit. I'll come up here, 
and I'll preview these visible toolpaths. And we see here that our eighth inch end mill has cleared everything out, and over in the corners is where the V bit came. Now, let me pause here for a second to talk about how the software displays these V carvings. You'll notice different colors in here, as you can see where the V bit has gone through and cleared it out. Remember that we're going to be pouring an opaque epoxy here. So all of this will be filled in. So this roughness doesn't matter. You'll also notice the little flecks of color in here. Those little flecks here are the colors. Those are the areas that were actually carved down to the same depth as the main pocket. It's going to leave little ridges, and you'll see those little ridges. It's okay. Again, we're going to be pouring an op opaque epoxy in these areas. It will get filled in. They will not be visible in the final project. All right, so that is our first tool path. So we can pour our clear epoxy. Now I can close. Come back over to the 2D view and I'm going to click off to deselect everything else. Let me bring up my cheat sheet here. And I'm going to use the order of operations to help guide me on which toolpath to go next. You'll also notice a few differences in the naming. I'm using this color of a pigment in my epoxy as well as this one and this one here. But you'll see where they come in as I create these toolpaths. The next toolpaths will be the peach color. So we'll go back over here to my V-carve toolpath. From here on, for the actual carving, the depth of cut would be 0.11. For this demonstration only, I'm going to cut 0.13. The reason I'm doing 0.13 is because if I don't cut deeper than that clear toolpath, you won't see anything when this toolpath previews because it'll be cutting shallower than this pocket. So I'm going to cut slightly deeper just so you can see the color when it does cut. So before I save G-code, I have to go back through my toolpaths and adjust this cut depth. All of them will be cut to 0.11. So with that in mind, I've adjusted my flat depth to 0.13. I'm going to keep the 15 degree V bit I'm going to keep using the 8th inch end mill. None of this is going to change up here at all. The only thing that's going to change is my vector selector. Again, I'll come in here, make sure that I've got closed vectors, all closed vectors, associate with toolpath. You will have to do this on every toolpath. Then I can uncheck clear, check peach says I have 12 vectors selected on that layer with everything checked as it's supposed to be. I can close, come down here, and we'll name this 2 Peach. I can calculate the toolpath, and there is our Peach. I'm going to go ahead and change the toolpath color. I think in my other preview, I made this tan just so I can see the toolpath. And we'll do that with the clearance path as well. There is our second toolpath. I've got a check mark in both boxes here. Let's preview these visible toolpaths. Well, it looks like he's a little sick, but the skin tone is good enough for this demonstration. Now we're ready to close. 
I'm going to go back to my 2D view and click off. Do another V-Carve toolpath. Let's check out the list. From here, we want to go to Brown. Cut out his shirt. Down here. So again, I've got 0.13, just so you can see the shirt. None of this is going to change. Come over to the selector. And we'll associate with toolpath. Turn off peach. Turn on brown. Close. Type in three. Brown. Calculate. Move this up here. I'm going to change the toolpath color to brown. Make sure I have a check mark here in both of them. We'll preview these visible toolpaths. And there we go. His shirt has been carved. Rather than bore you to death going through each of these toolpaths in real time, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to time lapse now. And I'm going to calculate all of the toolpaths for all of these layers. And we'll come back to real time when I get down around in this area here because there are some special considerations. Okay, I just finished carving his beard. The problem is, you can't see it. And this is an example of what I was talking about. The toolpath that I created for his beard is cut to the same depth as the flesh tone. So, for this display, for this demonstration only, I'm going to need to adjust the cut depth of this beard to cut a little bit deeper. So, I'll go with 0.14 for this demonstration only. And we'll calculate it. Then, nothing else has changed. I'll go ahead and rerun that toolpath. There we go. Now we can see his beard. But you begin to see what I'm talking about. This is why I haven't cut the mustache yet. Now, remember. This area is missing, but it's going to be filled with epoxy that will be the same depth as everything else. So when I go to cut the blonde toolpath, it will carve his mustache into the beard. So it looks like the mustache is laying over the top of the beard. Now I'll get back to calculating these toolpaths. Okay, the next tool paths I'm going to be doing are going to be up here in his, around his eye area. And they are not going to be big enough to need the clearance tool. So for these, I'm going to turn off the clearance tool and not use that at all. These will just be cut using the V-bit. Okay, the next toolpath I need to calculate 
are the outlines on my skull and crossbones. Now again, I'm going to be doing this cut depth simply for this demonstration. This is going to change when I go to save G-code. You'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm going to have to start the cut at the level of this carve here for this preview so that it will actually cut down into the material. So my start depth is going to be 0.13 and I'll cut the flat depth of 0.17 just to give it a little bit of a relief. Now when we go to save G-code, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to change this. But it's going to be handled a little bit differently than the other actual toolpath. So let me get this toolpath calculated and continue. And there are our black outlines. There is our pirate. Now again, the display doesn't really do it justice. Simply because it's showing all these areas where the V-bit carved a little bit differently than it's showing the areas where the clearance bit carved. But again, we're going to be pouring this full of an opaque epoxy, so it will turn out the same as our drawing. So now with our preview taken care of, we know that all these toolpaths are going to work. Now it's time to go ahead and save G-code. Now again, all of these carving depths were done just so we could see this preview. Now I get to go back through all of these toolpaths, and with the exception of the clear, the clear is going to stay at 0.12. This is the large, the deepest carve I'm going to make. Then when I get to the skull outlines, I will show you the different cut depth I'm going to use for that. So let me go back through all of these tool paths and I'm going to adjust the cut depth to 0.11 for all of them, then recalculate. Okay, for my black skull outlines, again, I'm going to change the flat depth to 0.11, but I know it's not going to carve that deep. What I want to do is start 0.03 deep. So instead of starting from the surface of the material, of the epoxy, it's going to start 30 thousandths of an inch below the surface, then cut that depth. That way, I know I'll have that black outline there after surfacing and sanding. So we'll recalculate, then come down to my black outlines. That's the last one I need to change. And these are all now calculated for actual carving. Let me go ahead and save this file now so none of those changes can be lost. Okay, we're now ready to save G code. So I can go ahead and close my preview window. I have not reset the preview because I want to keep this up. But now all of my toolpaths reflect the actual cut depth 
that I'm going to be using outside on the machine. Now I want to go ahead and select them all, and I want to go ahead and look at the summary. Now, obviously, we're going to be carving this over a number of days. So it's not actually going to take 15 days to carve this. We'll be able to combine these toolpaths and cut more than one area at a time. But the total machining time is still going to be less than two hours for this. But again, that's going to be over the course of a number of days. So let me go ahead and close this and uncheck all my toolpaths and come back down to my list here. And you'll notice that down here I have a pouring schedule. There are going to be certain areas that I'm going to have to cut just one, like on day one, I can cut and pour the clear epoxy. Then that has to sit for 24 hours to cure. Then I can come back and I can carve the peach. I'm going to carve the peach only because there are other areas of other colors out here that I don't want to get messed up. I don't want to accidentally put a couple of drops of peach into the blonde or into the brown of his shirt. So, day one I'll pour the clear, day two I'll pour the peach. On day three, I can pour the brown for his shirt and the dark gray up here in his hat. I can pour his green eye. I can pour the beard. And I can pour the bronze of the hilt of his sword. So all of that, those five colors, can be poured on day three. And similarly with day four, I can pour the, the sword blade. I can pour the white for the skull and crossbones. I can pour his gold earrings and I can pour the pink portion of his eye. So I have this set up to where it will take six days to do all of these pours. Then on day seven, I can come back, surface the entire thing, and do my profile cutout. So let's go ahead and start saving the G-code for just these pours. And again, I'm going to be referring back to my pouring schedule here. So I can combine tool paths and save them all as one G-code file. So the first day is going to be clear epoxy and day two is going to be peach. Now I've got my thumb drive here in my computer and I've got one master file called epoxy inlay pirate and I put subfolders in for all of these different days. Day zero, I have set aside for surfacing that uh, piece of material. I could combine that in with day one, but I'm going to keep it separate for now because I'm not going to go into surfacing in this video. So I want to go into day one, and that's going to be for my clear pour. I'll come up here into save toolpath. And the first thing I'm going to do is my clear clearance path that uses the 8th inch end mill. I'm going to save the visible toolpath to one file. It's only one toolpath. But again, remember that a visible toolpath has a check mark in this box next to the name. So I'll have to remember to check the ones that I want to include in this G code file. I have my machine selected. I have my post processor selected. Those are not going to change. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click Save Tool Toolpath. Now the toolpath naming is going to be a little bit different as well. I've navigated into my day one folder and I have one clear 
I'm going to highlight the word clear in the brackets here. And I'm going to type 1, 2, 5 inch end mill. And this tells me that this is the first toolpath I'm going to run today. And I'm going to use the 8th inch end mill for this toolpath. And I'll save it. Come back here to my day one folder, and there is my toolpath. Come back over here, and I'm going to uncheck the clearance pass, and I'm going to check the V bit pass. I have 15 degree V bit, visible toolpath to one file. There's only one. I'll save toolpath. I'm going to highlight that number, enter a 2. That's the second toolpath I'm going to run that day. And I'll type 15 degree V bit. Save it. And there are the toolpaths for day one. Day two, I'll go out, mount the material again, and I want to do my peach color. So I've Checked my peach color clearance tool. It's up here on my toolpath list. Save toolpath. And again, this is going to be the first toolpath I run today. So, number one. Come select that text and change it to one, two, five inch and mill. Make sure I navigate to the correct folder. Day 2. Save. Now I come down here to my folder. Go into Day 2. There is my end mill toolpath G-code. Uncheck. Check. V-bit. None of this is going to change. 2. Peach. 15 degree V bit. Save. That's day two. Day three. I'm going to come out and I'm going to cut the brown, the dark gray, green, bronze, and his beard. I've not put a color there because I don't know what to call that color. I'm going to custom mix it. So let's get the clearance pass. For the brown, dark gray, green, bronze, and beard. So we have over here the clearance pass for the brown, dark gray. What were the other ones? Dark gray, green, bronze, and beard. Ah, uh, there's the bronze. There is no clearance pass for green. There is the beard. Whoops. Yes, the beard. I have the clearance pass for the beard, the bronze, the dark gray, and the brown. Just the clearance passes. Let's up, go up here to the list and make sure. I have the brown, the dark gray, the bronze, and the beard. All of these will be output to one G code file. So, save toolpath. Go up to day three. And I'm not going to enter every single color in the name. I'm just going to use the first color that it lists in the name. I am going to make sure I have my pouring schedule with me outside on the machine. That's going to tell me what colors I need to mix up after I'm finished carving. So. Go back over here, and this is the clearance toolpath. So I'm going to type one, two, five inch end mill. This will be the first toolpath of the day. Day three, save. Now I want to go down and uncheck 
the clearance toolpaths, but check the VBIT toolpath. Uncheck clearance, check the VBIT. Uh, it was green, was I pouring with this? Yes, the green. So we'll come here and we'll check the green. Okay, I have them all. The brown, the dark gray, the bronze, the beard, and the green. And all of them use the 15 degree V-bit. We'll save. And this will be the second tool path I run. Fifteen degree V bit. Save. I'm going to do the rest of these tool paths exactly the same way. Then we'll come back when I'm finished. Okay, with that toolpath saved, I can uncheck everything. I can close that form. And I have all of my G code for all of the days of this pour. So I can now go outside. my material on the CNC router, surface it, carve my clear, and pour that clear. But that will be in the next video. The main thing to take away from this video is that associating a toolpath with a layer is the easy way to make absolutely certain you have only the vectors on that layer selected because it would be very, very easy to make a mistake and cut something again after you've already poured it. It would be very simple to select his beard and accidentally select a piece of his mustache and cut both of them when you didn't mean to do so by associating a layer with the toolpath you eliminate that possibility and you only select the vectors on that layer now again the cutting depths that i used in this demonstration were for the demonstration only I am, again, cutting 0.12 deep on the clear toolpath, and the rest of them will be cut 0.11 deep, maximum. So, I apologize for the length of this video. We had a lot of information to cover, and there was just no other way of doing it without creating two more videos. So I hope you got something out of this particular video. And if you did, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Now I know there's absolutely no way I answered every single question in this video. So this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where you can ask me any question you'd like about anything I've covered in this video or any of the previous videos in this series. And again, there's a link to the playlist to this entire series down in the description box of this video and coming up on the end screen card. Again, that live Q&A will be this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel, and there's a link 
to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. Now I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and I encourage you to subscribe to my channel so you can catch the next part in this series where we'll actually go out, surface the material, start carving, and pour this epoxy inlay. I hope to see you this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.